Placement of a double lumen endotracheal tube is an airway management technique that permits isolation and selective ventilation of a single lung. Double lumen endotracheal tubes consist of a bronchial lumen and a tracheal lumen. The bronchial lumen is longer with a distal opening designed so that it can be placed in the right or left main stem bronchus. The tracheal lumen is designed to be placed above the carina. Each lumen has a color-coded cuff, which is often blue on the bronchial lumen and clear on the tracheal lumen. Each lumen also has a color-coded pilot balloon. A Y connector connects both lumens to the breathing circuit. Placement of a double lumen endotracheal tube is indicated for prevention of damage or contamination in a healthy lung. Possible causes of such damage or contamination include hemorrhage or an abscess in the unhealthy lung. Other indications for placement of a double lumen tube include the need to control the distribution of ventilation during surgery. Management of a bronchopleural fistula, large lung cyst, or bulla, management of tracheal bronchial disruption, and facilitation of single lung lavage, which may be required in patients with pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Single lung ventilation also facilitates surgical access for many procedures, including thoracic aortic aneurysm repair, lung resection, minimally invasive cardiac surgery, video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery, esophageal surgery, mediastinal mass resection, and single or double lung transplantation. Contraindications to double lumen endotracheal tube placement include a difficult airway, tracheal stenosis, and distorted airway anatomy, any of which can impede or prevent correct positioning of the tube. Additionally, Aberrant takeoff of the right upper lobe bronchus from the trachea is a relative contraindication for right-sided double lumen tube placement. Double lumen endotracheal tubes placed on the right side have a different design from tubes placed on the left side. Right-sided tubes have an additional opening to allow for ventilation of the right upper lobe. Consequently, placement of a right-sided tube involves alignment of the additional opening and may require more expertise or troubleshooting than placement of a left-sided tube. In most thoracic procedures, the airway can be managed successfully with placement of a left-sided tube. Right-sided tubes are used in patients who are undergoing surgery involving the left main bronchus, such as left pneumonectomy, transplantation of the left lung, repair of left tracheobronchial disruption, or thoracoscopic surgery on the left side, and in patients with distorted anatomy of the left main bronchus, which may be caused by aneurysm of the descending thoracic aorta, tumors that compress the left main bronchus, and history of left upper lobectomy. In general, selection of an appropriate tube size is guided by the patient's sex and height. To perform the procedure, you will need the following equipment. Personal protective equipment. As required by your institution for the clinical scenario, a double lumen endotracheal tube, 3 ml and 10 ml syringes, a laryngoscope, and a fiber optic bronchoscope. Explain the procedure to the patient, including descriptions of the benefits, risks, and possible complications. Obtain written, informed consent from the patient or a proxy. Perform an airway examination as done for single lumen endotracheal intubation. Establish intravenous access and set up appropriate monitoring devices before inducing general anesthesia. Inflate the tracheal and bronchial cuffs and look for any leaks. Prepare the laryngoscope and confirm that it is functional. Prepare the bronchoscope and confirm that it is functional. Consider shaping the stylet to aid in placement of the tube and applying lubricant to the tube. Perform direct laryngoscopy to visualize the glottis. Advance the double lumen endotracheal tube until the bronchial cuff passes the vocal cords, taking care to avoid touching the tube to the patient's teeth, which could damage the tracheal cuff. Remove the stylet. Rotate the tube 90 degrees to the left or counterclockwise for placement of a left-sided tube, and 90 degrees to the right or clockwise for placement of a right-sided tube. Guide the tracheal cuff past the glottis, typically advancing the tube to 27 centimeters from the incisors in women and 29 centimeters from the incisors in men. Do not advance against resistance. Use the Y connector to connect the circuit to the double lumen endotracheal tube. Inflate the tracheal cuff and establish ventilation. Monitor the patient for exhaled carbon dioxide. 
Perform fibro-optic bronchoscopy to confirm that the double lumen endotracheal tube is positioned correctly. First, insert the bronchoscope into the tracheal lumen. Regardless of whether the tube has been placed on the left side or the right side, an inflated bronchial cuff, which is often blue, should be visible in the ipsilateral main bronchus with minimal herniation of the cuff into the trachea. Make sure to differentiate the primary carinae, that is, the carinae associated with the takeoff of the right and left main bronchi, from a secondary carinae, that is, the carinae associated with the takeoff of either a right or left lobe. Various anatomical structures can be used as reference points. For example, visualization through the tracheal lumen of the cathedral-shaped bronchial rings anteriorly and the longitudinal fibers posteriorly can assist with left-right orientation. The right upper lobe bronchus and the bronchus intermedius, which divides into the right middle lobe bronchus and the right lower lobe bronchus, should also be visible and can help to confirm orientation. Next, insert the bronchoscope into the bronchial lumen to confirm that the lumen does not terminate in a lobar bronchus. If a left-sided double lumen tube has been placed, the origins of the left upper lobe bronchus and the left lower lobe bronchus should be visible. If a right-sided double lumen tube has been placed, the bronchus intermedius with its branches to the right, lower, and middle lobes should be visible. Make sure that the additional opening of the right-sided tube aligns with the opening of the right upper lobe bronchus. If adjustments are needed, deflate the bronchial cuff first. When a bronchoscope is not available, the auscultation method can aid in confirming successful double lumen tube positioning. Before you initiate one lung ventilation, adjust the ventilator settings and inflate the bronchial cuff. To ventilate the lung distal to the bronchial lumen, place a clamp on the tracheal lumen of the Y connector between the bronchoscope port and ventilator. Then, open the bronchoscope port of the tracheal lumen, which is connected to the non-ventilated lung. This will allow the non-ventilated lung to collapse as the other lung is selectively ventilated. Troubleshooting issues such as hypoxemia or incomplete isolation of the selected lung is beyond the scope of this video. Obtain consultation for such issues. Major complications of double lumen endotracheal tube placement include hypoxemia from ventilation perfusion mismatch, impairment of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, tube occlusion, tube misplacement, and venous admixture, traumatic laryngitis, airway perforation due to trauma during tube placement or necrosis due to overinflation of the bronchial cuff, and inadvertent suturing of the tube to a bronchus. In this video, we have reviewed basics of double lumen endotracheal tubes, including indications and contraindications. We've also demonstrated the technique for insertion and discussed possible complications.